What's happening, good people? Welcome to another episode of the Cheap Champ Podcast. I'm on the road as usual, and I have a special guest today. I have Mr. Would you care to introduce yourself, sir? Dante Chang. Dante Chang, the owner of Flashback, a store slash open mic, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, tell us, Dante, how long have you been owning? How long have you had uh, Flashback? Well, it was a clothing store when I first opened it in 2000. 15, I think. So it's been six years, seven years, six, seven years. And uh, about two years ago, I started the open mic, was like a year and a half ago. So uh, so I'm a stand-up comedian at night, so I just like to have uh, just, I don't know, just a place to do comedy at night, you know? Nice. So that's like unique as hell to have a store and have a, com- you know, basically have your own place to do comedy. Are you, um, are you originally from L.A.? Oh, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. How long you been here? Been here for a minute. I think it's like 2001, so I've been here for a minute you know, since I was a kid. Did yeah. you move out here? Um, you moved out here for comedy or you moved out here with your parents? Just moved away. No, I just moved away, you know. Mm-hmm. Just moved away. My folks still stayed there, you know. Nice. Mm-hmm. And how long you been doing comedy? Seven years then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you, so you know you've been on the ins and outs. You know what it's yeah. all about out here in the L.A. grind yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. Nice. So what um, what made you want to start your own open mic? I mean, I know you wanted to work out. I, I just didn't want to. I, I just I was just tired of leaving uh, the shop. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I would leave. I'll catch an Uber like somewhere to go do open mic, and it would just you know I'm paying like thirty dollars a day, forty dollars a day on Uber rides and shit. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just build my own. Yeah, because you got to pay to do the mic, then you got to get there and get back. And Even then, if you don't, you got to wait and shit. So, I mean, it's just it's all different, different type of shit, you know? So I just, like, I just had to just make it more convenient for myself, you know? Right. Is that kind of re- the reason why you started the slot at mic? So you can, people can get in and out? Because, you know, yeah, you I like that. Like, I, I didn't hours. start it, though, by the way. Uh, this guy named Joe Benente started it. Oh, okay. Owner of Fourth Wall started it. And, uh, you know, before I opened, I went and asked him for his blessings mm-hmm. to, to, Open it, and he was he gave me his blessing. So I guess the rest is what it is. It is what it is. You know? Nice. What kind of clothes you sell? You sell here at Flashback? Like streetwear, mainly streetwear. You know. Okay. Yeah, like Belong, Bait, stuff like that. Oh shit! Um, damn. Was it something? Where is the? Is it clothes that? Is it just? I was gonna ask. Is it clothes that you design or? Oh, there's a few things in there that I design, but it's mainly you know, but it's mainly like a mix of stuff. You know, like it's just. Like modern streetwear, really, you know. Damn, technical difficulties. Shit needs a seat <laughs> So he said, um, mainly streetwear, like babe and whatnot. Yeah, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Like some hats and stuff like that. Nothing crazy. I mean. And some people think it's crazy. I just look at it as it's close, you know. Nice. And what? Well, the reason I really want to talk to you because uh, you were here during um, the riots back yeah. last July yeah. during 2020, yeah. and your store had some damage. What, if, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, it was looted and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. So, how? What was that whole situation like? Um, I didn't really care, to be honest with you. Like some people, everyone else. Uh, most everyone I know that got looted, people that I know, they were really uh, went to a dark place or really sad, you know. Some people they lost everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost a lot, but I don't know why. I look at things like you can't fix it if you're in that mode. You know what I mean? If you're right. in that, in that, I'm feeling sorry for myself mode. Not that you should feel sorry for yourself, because God, by some of you guys, man, really went through some shit. Yeah. But I just have a mentality where like. I don't know, just like when the COVID thing, it just, it's a challenge that I have to go come over. I'm not really afraid of shit, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I mean, I, I just knew I would, it would be fine, you know? Yeah, because I mean, you know, while people are dying, and you know, just to have your store damaged, because you put everything in, when you put stuff in context, it's like, uh, it could be a ton time, 10 times worse. So, yeah, I mean, but of course, some people, this is their livelihood, 
and whatnot. So, because I remember watching this on CNN, just seeing Melrose and all the crazy stuff that was happening and whatnot. So, did it take you a while to rebuild and start everything over? A few months, mm -hmm. you know. It was just a difficult paying rent during that time, but yeah, just because. But I mean, whatever, man. You get over it. I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe the looters are right. Uh, they got money, so they can take it, right? Right. That's maybe maybe their attitude a lot. I mean, I, I don't care. I mean, if you're in that place, if you're in that place, I kind of feel bad for you. If you feel like you need to, if it's necessary for you to steal from somebody, you know what I mean? Just run up in someone else's establishment and do that because you can't. I mean, at that moment, because it was just so, it was so vulnerable. The city was so vulnerable at that time that, like, I don't know, man. I, I kind of like, I've been on that side too, you know. Like, I've been that kind of guy once upon once upon a time. So, I'm very understanding and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, some people maybe they really needed it. Maybe they, maybe maybe some people are being greedy. I don't know. I don't really even much care. You know what I mean? It's, I just move on from it and uh, let's let's um i don't know let's make it happen let's make some adjustments you know let's do what's necessary to win you know do you think anything positive came out of the riots or anything like that i'm very i was very happy afterwards i mean a lot of great i mean i met um i met like really good people you know during this like there's people that reached out to me that were like uh that really did i didn't know very well i mean I've, i think within the day i had like over 300 messages nice of people trying to um help and shit so already like i took the first 30 they all came and it was literally back to new the next day like physically you know what i mean mm -hmm. they painted shit whatever whatever you know because you know those some damage and shit like that you know a lot of you know mostly theft though yeah so like yeah i really appreciate that then like the amount of money that I, I didn't take any of it. The amount of money that I got offered after it happened was like people were, I've, you know, I have some friends, I guess they're doing well in life. They uh, offered literally millions and millions of dollars. Damn. To, like not to loan, to just give to me. Right. But I didn't take it. I was like, I'm good. Nah, I'm fi I'll fix it. If I really need it, I'm all at you. I'm not, I'm going to, I'll talk to you about it. But I always, I first got to see if I could swim on my own. You know, I've always been like that. You know, and well, it's nice to have friends that they're in places like that. But I, I yeah. feel you, you know, you got to get because kind of like in comedy, you know, it's like stealing somebody's jokes, man. It, it's not you got to go up there with your own shit. Yeah, it's just it's just some about doing some on your own. It just puts you in a different place mm -hmm. and whatnot. Do you um do you see what do you see far as like the store growing? Do you see like yourself getting another location or, you know, trying to do anything else? You're just I think about it every once in a while. It just already this one's a lot of work. You know, because this is not just one business. It's it's several businesses in one. You know, we do podcasts in this room, that room. Got the comedy. We've got the clothing store in front. We got rooms upstairs to rent. So it's just like it's several businesses on, on by itself. That's you're, we're kind, I'm kind of like managing all of them. And, you know, my girl does a lot of it. Really most of the work, I just kind of have the idea a lot. You know what I mean? So. Is it tough? Because, like, you know, the podcast, we talk about cost of doing business and how much stuff costs. Is it, like, expensive to run a store? It's like, you know. It depends what you sell. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I would say if you want to open one like this, you got to have at least 100000 just kind of just that you could lose. I mean, that you could have stalled up for a second. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I would say it's to like. But if you go to the Valley, you could probably do a store for, like, 40000 You know, it depends on where you are, your location and, um. Uh, what kind of merchandise you say? You sell ten dollars shirts, you sell five hundred dollars shirts. All depends on what you're selling, all depends on what you want to do. You know, it's all it's all different, really. Is the marketing tough? Like trying to stick out because you got all these stores out here on Melrose. I do fine, man. You know, I do we do great, so I can't even complain. You know, I mean uh well, what can I say? You know, I'm happy with our numbers. Nice. Well, because you know a lot of people, I mean, you see so much competition out here, it's like, well. Unless you get out and walk on Melrose, it's like, well, how do you know which store is which? Mm -hmm. So I always ask, like, well, damn, you know, how do people stick out on, you know, because you got burger joints on every corner. So it's like, well, how do I make mine stand out and whatnot? You know, so but um, comedy wise, man, how, how how's comedy been going? How do you feel about getting back on stage and getting back? I on never really shows? got off. I kept doing it while during the pandemic. So, I mean, I've all, I would always find stage time. I would get booked. I would get 
outside venues. So, I mean, I would say for that first initial March mm -hmm. to June, I think that couldn't do much standing because that's when everybody was locked down. Yeah. But as soon as people started kind of leaving, like in June, so I mean, I don't know if people I know started leaving in June, kids started getting out a little more. And then, yeah, once I did that, it was like, we were good. Nice. Yeah. So you're back out. So you're back out 100% now. Yeah, I'm, I've been back out 100% since like last June. Like the moment they said we could do something, mm -hmm. you know, I left. Nice. Yeah. Where'd, you, uh, where'd you leave? Where'd you leave and go to? I mean, I'm not left. I mean, I just left my house. Oh, you just left and went out. Yeah. yeah. When did you start back doing, uh, the, when did you start the mic again here? January, I think. Fe or February, I think. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, well, damn, because, you know, tonight, without the mic, man, it's kind of hard to, get you know, get time out here because, you know, the clubs are still closed and they want you to either be vaccinated or be tested to get back in. So I don't know if everybody's with that, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, before we wrap up, man, is there anything um, – what would you like to see happen in 2021 for you, like store, comedy? I just always put it in God's hands, you know, what else, whatever – I do my best. I'll work hard every day, and whatever happens, happens. You know, right? Yeah. Hey, putting hey, like you said, putting God's hand, man. That's what hey, that's what everybody should do. Unfortunately, they do not. So, uh, where can everybody find you at? Um, if they want to come to the mic or come grab some fresh um, clothes, um, my uh, the stores. Um, IG is flash. F no, the mobile mic is FB comedy mic. Uh, and the IG is uh, yeah, FB Comedy Mike. Um, the store is Flashback Shop LA. And me personally, I'm, I'm Dante Chang. Dante Chang, owner of Flashback and operator of Flashback Mike. Thank you for tuning in. Well, it's a good thing we ended because of technical difficulties. <laughs> Until next time, take care. Hey, if you have any questions about financial literacy, you can check that out at www.stressmoneyless.com. And if you're interested in checking out more episodes, Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, at The Cheap Champ. And thank you to our sponsor, Cheap Not Bro. I got to get this shit fixed. Where is my damn outro? I'm just all fucked up. But you know what? I'm going to keep it all because this is, this is just how shit goes sometimes. Where's my damn...